Cornell, I want to start with you since you're the pollster of our bunch. Um, seven straight years that both parties have been underwater. And one of the things that I like to show people also, and I think we have this as a graphic, is look at the tumult actually with the American electorate over the last 20 years. All but once since 2004 have we gone through an election cycle without voting for some change, without changing at least the White House, House, or Senate. Only in 2012 did we have a no-change election uh, with Obama-Romney, and I think we all would go, ah, oh, Obama-Romney, that's suddenly the good old days of, of politics, right? Um, do you think it's just a coincidence that the parties have both been underwater since the rise of Bernie and Trump? <laughs> No, I, 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 I don't. But I also don't. I also don't put it directly at the feet of of, of Bernie and, and and Trump either. I think there are some. Look, you remember uh, a guy by the name of Barack Obama. Speaking of 2012, was running on his idea mm -hmm. that our politics was broken, and mm -hmm. and and Washington itself was broken. Right? He was making an argument not about against Republicans, mm -hmm. but he was making a much broader argument. And I think I can make the argument that that most of Washington, most voters think that Washington is broken and has been broken. For 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 a long time, and and you know, and and I'm not even being partisan here, but you know, they put the blame, as you see in your in NBC polling, mm -hmm. on both on both parties. It's a pox mm -hmm. on both their houses. I think most Americans think that the problems in Washington are not necessarily mm -hmm. partisan. It is that structurally, there's something that happens when people get here, and it's and 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 it's bigger than just than just this just one party. I will note that also. Look, both parties been underwater for for a for a number of number of years here, but uh, you know, Democrats were underwater, but seven points or six points in that NBC polling, but they still had one of the best midterm uh, off-year elections yeah. uh, in history there. No, and this is what, you know, Barbara Comstock, you're the one that's faced voters of our trio. Um, and you've you've talked to voters. I and, and I'm, sh you know, you've probably benefited from people not liking the parties, and then it punished you once you were an incumbent. Feels like this is the world that an elected official in the very rare thing that you represented a swing district um, has to deal with. Sure, exactly. I ran in 2009 in the Virginia um, General Assembly, and that was a referendum on Obama. And we did very well and elected a governor. In 2018, when I left, it was a referendum on Trump. So the elections are usually a referendum on the, on, on the incumbent. And right now, Biden is very much underwater. The top issues, which haven't been discussed yet, are inflation and the economy first. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is crime and the increasing crime and the failure there in the cities and then um, and also in the suburbs. And then education, where Democrats who have been, you know, carrying water for the teachers unions for years, and I come from a family of educators, but they have failed these kids mm -hmm. during um, the pandemic, which is why you saw here in Virginia um, uh, Governor Yunkin um, advance and, and is now in place dealing with those issues. So if you're not listening to the voters, which I think the previous discussion you had about Arizona and, and Ohio, um, those discussions, they weren't really talking about what the voters want, and those are the top three issues, and they favor Republicans now. I think in Ohio, Governor DeWine is going to, um, he'll do fine in that primary because he does listen to his voters and he's very much in touch. I think in Arizona, if we are fortunate enough for Governor Ducey, who has done smart things like he's having summer camps mm -hmm. for kids uh, to get you know, back into school and to all the time they've missed and gotten behind, he's going to have summer camps and summer school for them. I think he would be the most popular candidate for Senate. And he has an independent streak, just right. like Senator well, Sinema. John let McCain me ask you this, so Barbara. If people stop looking at, at Trump yeah. um, in the Republican side, they'll do much better because Biden is giving yeah. them plenty of ammunition to run against him. Well, you just sort of answered my question, which is, I think that I was I actually think Republicans should have looked better in our poll. And I think the one reason they're not right now is because of Donald Trump. Henry Gomez, you're exactly. on the ground there. How how unsafe is it to be an incumbent um, versus being, uh, you know, sort of part of the establishment? I mean, is that what this is, this unhappiness with the political parties? What do you see it as? Well, that's a very big part of it, Chuck. You know, there's this mentality right now. I mean, I don't want to call it a throw the bums out mentality, but you know, people on both sides are really frustrated with the leaders they have. The one, if you look at Ohio with Mike DeWine, mm 
which you talked about in the last segment. He should be okay. But the reason that probably will be the case in the primary is that there's more than one candidate running against him trying to run to that Donald Trump right wing uh, lane. If he succeeds, it'll be because of that vote being split, but also because he's a prolific fundraiser and in quantity, he should be right. okay. He's a little bit of an outlier. But the one number that struck me in the NBC poll is the the fifty the fifty six percent of people who identify as Republicans who say that they are more supportive of the party than they are of Donald Trump. Yeah. And I think once we get out of these primaries and cruise toward the general elections, that's what we're going to be looking at. And we're going to be looking at races that are structurally a lot more like Virginia's gubernatorial race last year between McAuliffe and Youngkin, where Youngkin was able to sort of keep Trump at a distance, accept his endorsement, but not rally with him. These people aren't necessarily animated by the things that Donald Trump is saying and doing anymore. Right. And I think that's what showed through in the poll. One other point, the voting issues, whether you frame it as voting rights or election integrity, and it kind of depends on which yeah. party you're in, it, it, it's not... Uh, as as uh, Representative Comstock just said, it's not one of the top two or three issues necessarily for Democrats or Republicans. Right. They want to talk about the economy. They want to talk about COVID. Maybe we'll be past COVID by the time the, the general election rolls around. But these are issues that are particularly near and dear to Trump when we talk about the voting issues that may not, you know, that are going to be hard to reach when you talk to voters on the campaign right. trail this fall. Cornell, Penny, for your thoughts on the Kirsten Cinema back and forth. Uh, you know, I understand uh, the frustration. Should this be this public? And is this harmful to the party? No, it's just democracy, right? This is this is how democracy mm -hmm. works. And it's not always pretty. But when people uh, don't like what, what what's happening, they they, 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 they they let you know. And look, I've been trying to tell Democrats, any Democrat will listen for the last two years, that voting rights um, uh, is not a secondary issue consideration to the base of the Democratic Party. It is, in, is in fact, a first and foremost issue consideration. And, the, and, and if you're not paying attention to their issues and following along with their issues, and, um, and by the way, a lot of Democrats ran on the ideal that they would do something about voting rights. You should not be then surprised if you block voting rights from happening in their eyes, right? I'm not being one sided mm -hmm. about it. I understand. But in their eyes, you're the reason right. why voting rights isn't happening. You shouldn't be surprised that then they're going to challenge you in a primary because, because quite frankly, that's how it's supposed to work. I have to go back to one thing here, however, Chuck, Chuck I actually wasn't trying to be partisan in this conversation. But, but Republicans do have to, in fact, run on something. Right. And we outline sort of yeah. all the bad things about sort of Biden and, and the economy and all these other things. What exactly do the Republicans you? are for? No, I, I, it's funny you say that. Something. Cornell, though, I, I, I wonder, do that's sort of the question I have here in our politics right now. If you're the out party, voters are not punishing you for not running on something. And, and we, we, if, well, if, running, we, if we allow it. Right. And, and, and that's and quite yeah, frankly, we ahead. have allowed it. But Hang if on, you Barbara. do look at, and NBC was was reporting on this earlier, there's a lot of Republicans right now who are out there chiming on and running on the fact that they were for that, that you know they're getting all this infrastructure dollars when not one of them voted for these yeah. for these infrastructure for this infrastructure bill. You know, Barbara, look, I know you're going to make a case that Republicans are for some things. That's not how Kevin McCarthy's doing it. That's not how Mitch McConnell's doing it. They're both basically saying we're not running on anything except against Biden which is good politics, but they're not really running on an agenda here. It isn't clear what they're running on. Listen, I, I think they're running on the economy and inflation and kind of the worst inflation we've had since uh, Jimmy Carter's years. They're running on keeping kids in school and education and coming up with innovative ways to make sure your kids are going to get that makeup of, of what they've lost over the past two years. And then crime. Defund the police has been a disaster for Democrats, and that has given Republicans an opportunity to stand with their local police while still being for reform. Tim Scott, a Republican senator, is one of the leaders on having a criminal justice reform while standing with the police. So I think you have the ability to ha be strong on those key issues, and then you have foreign policy mm -hmm. problems that Biden has too. But I think the Republicans who focus on those issues instead of Donald Trump Put him in the mm -hmm. rearview mirror. Don't let him muck up things. Yeah. They're going to do fine. And I point out Brad Parscale, if he's running anyone's campaign, he knows how to waste a lot of money, and he's a loser. So <laughs> don't hire him. But there's a lot of grifters out there you should stay away from. But I think you're going to see a lot of Republicans who focus on the yeah. issues yeah. and not on Trump advance hey. in these primaries and do well, like yeah. Liz Cheney, like Lisa Murkowski. Well, let... And that's how we're going to get uh, good Republicans in office. 
Uh, Henry Gomez, last word to you. The, there is a bit of a Democratic primary in the governor's race, not really one in the Senate race. Have you noticed the difference between not having a primary for a guy like Tim Ryan and, and what kind of candidate, you know, how has he positioned himself versus perhaps the two candidates that do have to worry about a primary in the governor's race? Have you noticed any difference? I have. I mean, Tim Ryan is going to a lot of places in rural and southern Ohio that Democrats haven't been paying a whole lot of attention to over the last, you know, eight to 12 years here in Ohio. But he does have a primary opponent. And I'll leave you with this interesting tidbit. Morgan Harper, who's the more progressive position toward the left candidate in the Democratic primary, because she can't get Tim Ryan to debate her, is debating Republican Senate candidate Josh Mandel later this week in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, <laughs> debate that I think is, I mean, you think you've seen it all in the Ohio Senate race, and then you see this. So, no, I mean, it's kind of appointment it, viewing if you're an Ohio politics nerd like me. I was just going to say, Henry, I, I think you should thank your lucky stars you have the Ohio beat this year. Uh, and we'll leave it at that. Come visit. Anyway. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I think we definitely will. Cornell Belcher, Barbara Comstock, I appreciate both of you as well as we bring a little political panel back to 2022.